Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Pierce, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Sun-Saturn conjunction taking place in the sign of Aquarius on February 16th, 2023. So if you want to get the scoop on what it means, what to look out for, and how it is likely to color the year or so ahead, stick around. And while you're at it, why don't you hit the, uh, the like button, subscribe, do all those things that help this channel out and let's dive in so when any planet makes a conjunction with the sun <clears throat> you do get a blending of the topics and significations related to the sun and that planet but you also get a sort of renewal as well as a sort of closing out of stories and themes related to that planet they're sort of chapter markers and in some cases, the beginning and end of, you know, whole stories, right? So it's important to take a look at whatever house the sign of Aquarius falls on in your birth chart and consider, you know, what stories have been playing out in that area of your life and how they might be uh, coming to a close or how things might be beginning to shift into a sort of new phase or new chapter, right? So if, for example... Aquarius is your 10th house. If you were a uh, Taurus rising, you might be seeing a sort of wrapping up of an ongoing theme related to your career. Maybe you've been hemming and hawing about whether or not to leave a job or make a career change of some kind. Or your company has been restructuring and that process is uh, sort of coming to completion around this time. Or if Aquarius is your seventh house and you're a Leo rising. You may be experiencing the end of a relationship or the completion of a particular phase in a relationship. Perhaps maybe considering moving in together and finally making that decision and then doing it, right? Obviously, the variety of stories taking place are as varied and numerous as there are people. But perhaps we should take a closer look at what exactly is happening when the Sun and Saturn conjoin, particularly in the, the sign of Aquarius. So Aquarius is a sign traditionally ruled by Saturn. Saturn is playing host to the Sun, and therefore receiving the Sun in its home, in its castle, or perhaps a sky fortress. Uh, Saturn is super strong, while the Sun is uh, the opposite in many ways. The Sun <clears throat> the sun's home is in Leo, but in Aquarius, it's in the opposite sign, where it is traditionally said to be in its detriment or in its exile, antithesis, however you want to frame it. Uh, the sun's very much not at home and really doesn't have uh, access to its own resources in Aquarius. It has to look to Saturn to provide for it uh, a means by which to express solar topics. And one of the uh, really important traditional significations of the sun that uh, really kind of lie at the root of what the sun represents is this idea of, of gnosis, what the Greeks called gnosis, which more or less translates to knowing, <clears throat> the state of knowing, the uh, being a point of consciousness around which uh, a state of, of knowing can exist and radiate as the, uh, <clears throat> you know, really the the difference between me and you, the viewer, is that we represent two different points of perception as well as expression, right? We're separated, in a sense, by both literal and abstract space. As an individuated point of consciousness, I have access to my accumulated experience and knowledge, right, that is very different from yours. And in many ways, Saturn represents that separation, that distance, that space. As while the sun represents uh, this idea of, of gnosis, of knowing, Saturn represents traditionally ignorance, or literally uh, that which we don't know, the, the limits of our knowing. You know, the further we get away from the sun, the more it starts to represent just a dim source of light against the backdrop of many other points of light 
But if you're right next to the sun, obviously it is uh, all encompassing <laughs> and is very much a uh, consumer of one's attention. So what happens when these two uh, rather antithetical bodies um, sit on top of each other? You know, what happens when the sun comes into alignment with the limits of its light? And what happens when Saturn comes into alignment with the all-consuming rays of consciousness? Well, at its essence, it's uh, really the idea of, of becoming very, very clear on what the, um, the limits of both our ability to understand something as well as our, our, li our limit and capacity <clears throat> to do or be. And while uh, familiarity with one's limits is tremendously important and uh, probably a, a key component to what most people would call wisdom, it is nonetheless uh, often a difficult experience, right? Most of us uh, as children, you know, dreamed of, you know, created a, a version of ourselves or of our lives that really knew no limits because we hadn't really encountered them yet. Anything was possible in a sense because we had no real reason to believe that anything that we imagined could not be possible. However, as we age, right, we not only become uh, acquainted with our, our limitations, we encounter the uh, limitations of time. While you may well have the potential and capacity to be a movie star, an opera singer, uh, an astronaut, and a concert pianist, uh, you are inherently constrained by the, uh, the limitations of your lifespan, right? You only have so much lifetime in which to spend uh, cultivating those things, those potentials. And at some point, in order to make any one of them happen, you have to choose one at the expense of the other or at the expense of many. And often uh, these encounters are rather depressing, right? This is not uh, happy wisdom per se. So when we're considering the sorts of cycles that might be coming to a close around this time, or what uh, sort of cycle might be about to begin, we have to sort of think about it in terms of a sort of uh, elimination or narrowing down of potentiality. And when we further consider um, the meaning and, and topics associated with this, uh, the, the third decan of Aquarius, which is associated in Terra with the Seven of Swords, which depicts uh, a figure sort of sneakily uh, carrying away five swords, but leaving two behind. Kind of looks like he's uh, escaping a military camp of some kind. <clears throat> Maybe stealing something, or otherwise just making a sort of strategic departure. And what we get in the third decan of Aquarius is this idea that it is uh, no longer possible to remain in, um, in a sort of ambiguous state or uh, in limbo, if you will. As we've talked about um, in previous forecasts, uh, Aquarius represents this sort of outside of the boundary space, this sort of frontier space, sort of unincorporated territory that is sort of yet to be defined or in the process of being defined. And by the time you get to the third decan, and maybe even especially when you get to these last few degrees of Aquarius, which are uh, actually uh, represent a bound or term ruled by Saturn. It's kind of the most Saturn-y Saturn part of, of Aquarius. By the time you get there, the you know potentially vague and uh, amorphous space that has yet to be defined has slowly become defined or rather more accurately it's uh maybe harder and harder not to see what it is it's rather like the potential of that unincorporated space has expired and sort of solidified into what it actually is and it is from that point that we must choose whether to stay with what is accept it as it is and work with it or or move on perhaps taking with us 
um, elements of it that were important or that were useful while discarding or leaving behind what wasn't. And this is inherently, you know, uh, not always the most comfortable of, of processes, right? You know, wherever the uh, Aquarius part of your chart is or part of your life is, something is becoming um, impossible to see as anything other than it actually is. In many ways, uh, what the is sort of drawing to a close or, or sort of experiencing a death, it's kind of the, the end or death of vagueness and ambiguity, which for some of us may be a bit of a bummer because, you know, we're not able to see something for what we wanted or hoped that it could be anymore. And we may be disappointed with what it actually is. While for others, you know, this could be uh, a bit of a relief, really, as we, you know, you no longer have to live in uncertainty. This sort of uh, heavy, concrete clarity that is being offered actually represents a sort of hard, solid foundation upon which we can move forward and continue and build, right? There are uh, certain things that can't be built on hope alone. <laughs> or there's a point where hope becomes wishful thinking or even denial. To some degree, uh, hope can only really exist when all the facts aren't in yet. But uh, Sun conjunct Saturn in Aquarius, the facts are, are coming in. And it becomes a question uh, of how to move forward from there. I think one of the uh, phrases I keep thinking about, <clears throat> it seems very Sun Saturn to me, is just the when people say, it is what it is, which is both a, a sort of acceptance of a certain amount of ignorance, I think, but also um, like a willingness to not see something in, um, unamb in ambiguous terms anymore, right? It's uh, some degree, it's uh, you've reconciled yourself <laughs> with the limits of your ability to understand or change or alter a situation or concept. And it just is. I was uh, watching, I've been rewatching uh, The Simpsons with my kid lately. Uh, it's a great show, but uh, I was watching the episode where Homer is watching an infomercial um, about this product that will let him grow hair, right? And he gets really excited, and you know, he's like in the bathroom looking through all these old hair products that he used and didn't work. And he goes uh, to the doctor and gets um, basically gets access to this product that uh, you know gives him this luscious flowing hair, and it's it's kind of great, and everything just works out for him. But as you know, with The Simpsons, nothing ever actually changes; it just goes on <laughs> for you know thirty years. So he ends up you know not getting to keep his hair right, and to some degree, he just kind of has to accept that he's bald, you know. <laughs> uh, and while you can put a lot of energy, invest a lot of money and time into, you know, trying to regrow hair and maybe you'll succeed. You know, there's a potentially a kind of relief in just accepting your baldness, right? Uh, then you can move on to other things, things that maybe you have a, a better chance of uh, altering or, or changing or interacting with it in a constructive way. So, you know, while, you know, you may have heard some uh, maybe fear and trepidation around the Sun-Saturn conjunction, which is, you know, not altogether uh, invalid or irrelevant. Um, it's not, you know, a good time necessarily. It is likely to be <clears throat> the sort of event that in retrospect, you're probably going to be glad of, or the sort of knowledge that you're going to be glad that you came into. Because, you know, none of us want to spend the rest of our lives trying to regrow hair that isn't going to grow, right? Uh, is it not better to, at some point, come to the understanding that further efforts to grow hair is not uh, going to reap benefits? And once you assimilate that understanding, there's a potential for, for liberation and moving on. So, yeah, take a look at uh, your birth chart. You know, what um, what house is... The conjunction taking place in and what what truths may be coming to light that you can no longer unsee and how can you best uh, move forward with that knowledge and let me know in the comments section i'd love to hear what you guys have going on 
And with that, uh, this has already gone on longer than I had planned, so I'm going to wrap it up. And uh, I'll see you next time. Happy Saturn Kazini, everyone.